Good afternoon, staff. BC Weltigal here today. Um, just wanted to let you guys know that we have been asked by the county to assist in uh, a criminal case that involves uh, an arson that happened outside of our jurisdiction. Um, they have asked uh, one of our firefighters to be a expert witness. And today I want to talk a little bit about um, uh, what that means and what the process for that is and you know just kind of an overall what that uh, looks like so uh, the first thing that we're going to talk about is the expectations of um, an expert witness um, an expert witness is someone that uh, the defense or the prosecution can call and that person is brought into the courtroom because they are quote a subject matter expert um, they're certified as an expert witness and they come into the courtroom and their objective is to deliver a, a factual objective opinion that is unbiased in any way shape or form so basically if you're certified as an expert you're going to go into that courtroom and you're going to lay out the facts as you know them so um <clears throat> some talk about um you know we should be an advocate for what we believe in as far as fire investigation goes. Some will argue that fire investigators should not be advocates for that. Um, however, it is our job to advocate for the truth. Um, and that's uh, written right in our um, IAAI um, uh, literature. So we're there as an expert witness to be advocates for the truth. Um, one of the other things that you might run into in the courtroom is um, often defense attorneys will um, maybe ask some hard or some uncomfortable questions and it may come off to you like they're um, you know they're challenging you or they don't believe you or you know you're making you feel a certain way and it's really important that we make sure that we understand that that defense attorney they're they're doing their job they're they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing um, they're asking questions so we have to do our best job to not you know show that emotion and stay in that that objective mindset that we're there to tell the facts as we know them. Um, and in order to ignore that, not, not ignore that conflict, but to avoid that um, conflict, we can, uh, it kind of starts outside of the courtroom. We can build relationships with the different attorneys. Um, we can kind of prove to the attorneys that you know, we do know what we're talking about. We are very educated individuals. Um, and we, we understand the subject that we are there to testify on. Um, we want to show them that we have um, a lot of integrity, that we're confidential. Um, and we just try to um, be as professional as we possibly can to, to handle that. Uh, another thing that gets brought up um, is the use of fire modeling um, in the courtroom. Uh, as an expert, you may use the fire modeling that we use when we go out and investigate a fire scene. Um, there is a, kind of a hot button issue surrounding fire modeling in the courtroom. Um, can be kind of a catch-22. Um, <clears throat> remember, going back to the conflicts with, with the attorneys, their job is to try and, you know, find holes in your story or find holes in the facts or, or whatever it may be. Um, fire modeling can be one of those things. It, it's very, very useful to kind of talk through your hypotheses, um, but it also, you know, the more information that you give those attorneys, the more information that they have to try and poke holes in. And fire modeling is a really good uh, instance of that. Um, but again, like I said, it, it, it does have its benefits. It can improve your hypotheses or work through them or work through how you eliminated hypotheses and came up with your um, your final conclusion. So that does help. Um, but overall, when you go to uh, the courtroom and be an expert witness, um, have some confidence, make sure that you know, you feel as comfortable as you possibly can with the setting. Um, relax, you're not on trial. Um, understand that the attorneys are doing their jobs. Um, and you're there to just provide um, truthful matters 
that you're the expert in the room and, and just be confident in that, in your training and everything that you've done uh, up until this point in your career. And are we gonna get it wrong sometimes? Yeah, we are. I mean, we're human, we're gonna make mistakes. But if you follow a couple of these few points, I think that um, you're going to do well as an expert witness. So we'll talk a little bit more about this when the time gets closer, but I just wanted to give you a quick uh, rundown today. Thank you very much.